Okay, my brain tells me if I can get those connected to that, it should be all lined up now. All right, just enough fiberglass to hold it in place. This cannot come loose no matter what. So I'm just going to put a whole bunch of fiberglass on it. And it only has about two centimeters of connection there. So I just have to put a lot down there. Wrap it around. Yeah. That's better. I just need to clean these off down to here. All right, I got these all blackened. Oh man, those look great. Now I need to make the other two of these for the other side. Those were kind of difficult to make. I guess I just need to go do it. Not that these need it, but I riveted them in. One on each side. And I also have these ridiculous things that I would never buy, but I happen to have them. I'll have to, I guess, glue those on or maybe put a screw through. Yeah, I should glue them on. Make a nice seal so these don't fill up with water. Ah, still a bit wet. Alright, All right, I just spent most of today sanding the bottom of this sucker. It's pretty smooth. Smooth enough! I was just sanding the edge of my paint here a little, you know, because the water might come up there. And I noticed this. Look at this dent. What is going on? It took me a few minutes to realize what was happening. If I push this in, it pops out to where it should be. And it's because this is a sealed chamber. And it's early in the morning right now. And it's cooler. And the, the air inside this chamber is contracted and it's sucking this in. So, I think I may need to go in there, cut the, the access port to here so this can not happen every time it gets cool. <laughs> Seriously, for a minute I was like, how did I do this? How did I do such a bad job? All right, let's, hopefully it's just the air pressure and once I release it, it'll pop right back out. All right, you big pajama grandma. Oh, so right up here I want to have a door to get in that front section. I also need to make a door back here so I can get into where the motor's going to go and all that stuff. Oh, I can throw this thing in the water right now and drive it around. <clears throat> 
But I do want to finish the paint, and I may as well cut these doors while I'm waiting for the paint to dry. Because it's oil paint, it takes a couple days to like really dry. Okay, what shape door do I want here? I don't know. Uh, hmm. Maybe a it's flat at the top to be good because then I can attach a hinge. Looks good to me. If I'm right about the air contraction, as soon as I start this, it should start sucking in. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a second so it doesn't just suck all the dust in as I'm going. Did you hear it? It was totally sucking. I bet that spot's popped it back out. Oh yeah, so much better now. Now I'm going to try to cut this in a way that all the dust doesn't go in there. So I'm going to cut this way so I'll get the blade coming this way so it shoots it out. I cannot see my line. Oh, there it is. Some bits in there. Nothing fancy here. I did cut out another piece for this. This isn't the one I cut out of there. I made it a little bigger so it would overlap. Now do I need to worry about rain getting in here? This does overhang a little bit so it would only be rain that's coming in this way. Maybe I'll leave it for now. I can always put a little gutter over it if I feel like. But if only a few drips get in now and then. That's not a big deal. Alright, that's good. While I've got my cutter and stuff out, I may as well cut the, the hatch back here too. This has to be big enough to get the motor in there, you know, do all the assembly, whatever I need to do to get the motor lined up right. Uh, space for the batteries. Probably the charge controller will go in here too. I want to be able to get in here and have lots of space anyway, so probably most of this will just be openable. I also need ventilation. So maybe if I uh, cut this out, then I can put, instead of putting a door that fits flush, I could put a door that's raised up a little and just overhangs a lot so it has some space for airflow to get through. You know, I should make the cover for this before I cut this piece out. And I can just uh, lay some newspaper on here, then put fiberglass right on it. Take that off. That'll be my cover. Then I can cut this out. All right, Bishop, in you go. I put a couple pieces of string on here, resined them in. It's just paracord. So that if you know a raindrop lands here and it's not far enough to one side or the other to actually roll down uh, and the wind is pushing it that way you know come and hit the string and then go down the sides and the same thing back here this is only relevant you know if the wind is blowing a drop in all right how do i attach this thing on here hmm it could be hinged on the side or it could be like whoop, whoop. Hmm. Let me think about that. Since I already had a dust mess, I drilled the holes in here I've been meaning to do. You know, so wind can blow through. And just because I like them. I got the whole thing painted. So the nice thing about that is all that mess of dust and stuff. First I swept it off, but anything that's left is just glued down with paint now. Got my caps glued on there. Yeah. Nice. What do I do up here to make sure these don't come off? You know what? I think I'm not going to worry about that right now. It's not like they're going to just fall off like 
this being buoyant pushes them up in there and they're they're also they fit kind of snug good enough for a test i'll put something on there after um, yeah i think i'm ready to take this thing in the water tomorrow yeah Not entirely sure how this attaches yet. Ah, I can do a test just like that. It's a little snug. Yeah. I can definitely do a test with that on just like that. probably gonna change the propeller blades but I'm gonna test them before I do it so I can have a better idea of how to change them. The steering's working great. Man there's some slick steering under there. Fingers crossed for good weather tomorrow morning.